Hello and welcome to the Inspire Life Podcast. My name is Michael. I am your producer and co-host. And today, really excited to share Ashley's story of hope. So Dr. Mel and Ashley did this interview because Ashley was inspired to share her story. And moving from a lot of different things going on with health, with mental health, emotional health, physical health, and finding Dr. Mel, beginning to work with her and really getting her life back. So Please take a listen, and I think the biggest thing we can all take away from this episode is that no matter where we are at, what our circumstances are, or what we've experienced in the past, there's always, always, always the ability to heal. Without further ado, I'm going to let Dr. Mel and Ashley take it away. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mel, and I am joined by our amazing practice member and friend, I'm going to say it, Ashley, and she's here today. Uh, to share her amazing story and it's going to be a conversation. Um, We know that there's interview questions and testimonials and what I really want for you know you Ash is to feel like this is a safe place to share your story because a lot of people tune into our YouTube and our podcast who I know have struggled with very similar things that you have gone through and so I really want this to be a safe conversation and place where you can share your truth and what you have experienced um, under care in your healing journey. So let's roll it back to the beginning of time. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, tell us, you know, what was life like before you started your healing journey on Inspire Life? And I know other things you're doing and yeah. however much you want to share, the space is yours. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I just want to start off by saying thank you for, you know, making this space mm-hmm. available. It means a lot to just be able to come down and sit here and say, this is what I'm about, this is my truth. Um, so if we wanna rewind, I just wanna to touch a little bit even further back. So I, I think people um, think, well, right before I started my healing journey, I was in, I had already done so much work at yes. that point. Um, so I just wanna kind of go a little bit further back Absolutely. and start at, um, you know, my preteen years were, were not great. <laughs> they were, uh, to say the least, the years that were obviously the most challenging for most people in the first place. But when I was, um, you know, I was 12, I started self-harming. I was being sexually molested. Um, It was a really just unfortunate time. I didn't understand what was going on. Um, And it really, that was the age group that really started me off on this like really terrible trajectory. This trajectory of just, you know, self-harm, self-loathing. I gained a bunch of weight. I stopped playing sports mm-hmm. shortly after that. I, you know, really withdrew, um, and I became a, a very mentally and physically unwell person. Mm-hmm. Um, I spent most of my life after my teen years in and out of psychiatric hospitals, mm-hmm. taking the gambit of medications. I am not exaggerating when I say I've taken twenty-five plus mm-hmm. psychiatric medications. Mm-hmm. Um, None, none of them were helpful. None of them, most of them made me worse. Yeah. Most of them um, put me in the hospital, if, if anything else, than keeping me out of the hospital. Um, and that was so, my mental health journey really was just like the standard, you know, you go to a psychiatrist, you go to a therapist. I, I was essentially screaming all the time, I'm doing everything, I'm right. doing everything. You're doing all the right things. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. And I, I was just every day getting worse and worse. I mean, I, I started to notice that it wasn't just my mental health that was the problem, my physical health mm. just completely tanked. So my mid-20s, I was still drinking all the time. Mm-hmm. I was definitely smoking weed all the time. Yeah. Um, anything I could to just numb out everything that was happening to me. I just couldn't process the things that were going on. And so I spent most of my 20s just trying to run away as much as I possibly could. Um, I was very suicidal through most of my 20s. I did not want to be alive. I didn't see the point. Um, It really felt like there was going to be nothing better. I had already, you know, like I had already experienced everything life had to give and it was crap. So why am I doing this? Um, I... Gosh, so I feel like mid 20s, I finally realized that, you know, maybe I should stop drinking. Maybe I should stop, you know. What was the, was there a moment? Because I think a lot of people can resonate with that just Mm -hmm. to interject. Because I mean, yeah, I can imagine, especially now, post 2020. So if you're watching this video, it's summer 2021. Yeah. And 
one, you're not alone. Two, thank you for sharing that. Three, mm. when I do these, you know, space holding experiences for people, oftentimes there is like a hitting rock bottom. So yeah. what was that like? Like, was there a turning point where you're like, holy shit. Yeah. I need to get some stuff together. I mean, I had more than one of those for sure, <laughs> right? Like you yeah. like in yeah. stages, but the really like, big yeah, one. I'm not gonna listen yeah. to it right now. Like, <laughs> eh, maybe next time. Uh, it's not really bottom, right? Yeah. No, um, it's a new bottom. There's definitely the biggest one I can remember is probably um, I was drinking and I just was I don't normally I didn't normally go to bars, but my uncle and aunt were in town, and mm. so they wanted to go out, and we were out, and I was. I stayed after everyone else left. I was alone, just like drinking, and I ended up like losing my cell phone. And mm. you know, some strange man tried to take me home. And thankfully, like my current husband showed up to pick me up and was yeah. like, "Whoa, hey, she's really drunk, and that's yeah. not appropriate." I woke up the next morning, and my husband was looking at me, and he's like, "I love you unconditionally, mm. but you're running yourself into the grave." Wow. And so, you know. I'm I am in a relationship in which I don't I don't have a controlling husband. I have a husband who supports, loves, lets me learn my own lessons, you know. Awesome he's, husband. He's a very <laughs> good partner. Um so when if he's came out of the way to say, you know, something's gotta give here. Yeah. If not for me, but for you, you know, yeah. you just can't live this way. Um I ended up at that time I was still very much in the whole uh, regular medicine approach to getting help. Yeah. So I ended up checking myself in. It was my only um what's the word I want? My only not forced hospitalization. Yeah. So I chose Autonomy. to yes, I yeah. chose to put myself in the hospital and said, mm. you know, like I was still in that please help me stage, but I knew that I had to change change. Yeah. I knew that either Look, if I'm not going to kill myself, but I feel like I want to die all the time, then I have to do something about this. Something has to be different. Mm -hmm. And so I, I checked myself in the hospital. I stopped drinking. When was this? I was 26. 26. So I'm 31 now. So that was some Seven, some years ago. Five years yeah. ago. That's not very long ago. No. Okay. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. So I, I stopped. I mean, I, I was definitely... Um, exhausted by then I mean I was yeah. I was I couldn't it couldn't keep up in the first place no. but I was still relatively physically healthy I mean I was overweight still and I definitely but it was really my mental health yeah. that was at the time really showing up so I yeah. spent 25 26 27 just being like okay no more psychiatric medications I could not find a doctor who would support that decision really um unfortunately a psychiatrist yeah. they were I mean they're very much in their realm of medicine and it just wasn't helpful to me mm -hmm. and so um you know my husband and i went to do our research and we looked online how do you withdraw how do you tear down how do you Google? cut out right <laughs> <laughs> and so we finally i just got off all my psychiatric medications and that was a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. um definitely if anybody is watching this and they're considering doing that i mean have love have support yes. have help um it's not something, it's not a decision to be made lightly, yeah. but I think if you're resonating with this idea that like you think medications are making you worse, I mean, there was a lighter moment after wow. clearing my body from right. those medications for right. sure. Um, mm -hmm. It just felt more, it felt closer to being able to find me. Yeah. And so after I stopped taking those medications, I stopped drinking, I spent those years just like really still trying to figure out why I was so unhappy <laughs> um, and I but I uh, at 28 so at 28 years old I picked up my husband from work one day we were driving home and I suddenly had a debilitating like sensation in my left ear yeah. and it was um, I was driving so yeah. I had to literally pull over um, I it was this intense pain I became immediately dizzy and immediately nauseous That's and right. I just it was I had never experienced anything like that before. So I was terrified. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm having a stroke. Like something really yeah. bad is happening to me. Um, and I was just out of the blue. Really, out of the blue. I was, mm. I was, I mean, I was feeling as healthy as I normally do, which was at the time not healthy. Yeah. But I mean, the norm for me. Right. I just didn't, um, it was a total, seriously, snap. We were in the middle of a conversation about what we were going to go home and make for dinner. Mm. Totally pleasant. Things were fine. And I just, it's like something, a light switch flipped. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm 
sick, <laughs> like something is wrong. Yeah. Um, we ended up taking me to the emergency room just to check off the like, I'm not having any big scary yeah. things going on. Um, and that was the first time that somebody tried to tell me I had Meniere's disease, mm. which is uh, an inner ear disorder. I won't get super mm. into it. Um, I they don't. can Google it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it, it was... It was debilitating. So from 28 to 29 and a half, pretty much, I got progressively worse. So at first it was just a couple times a week, I would be, had to sleep all day. It makes you really tired, really dizzy, really nauseous. And then it came to the point where I couldn't work anymore because I was sick all the time. I couldn't shower by myself anymore. I couldn't drive. I couldn't go to the store. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suddenly, it, it crept up pretty quickly, but it felt like just ever progressively like, oh, this thing you could do before you can't do anymore. Mm. And I was, you know, I was once again crying to the rooftops. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. I was seeing the specialists. I was taking the medications. I was trying not to eat the foods. They said, don't eat these foods, do these things. Um, and I was just, it wasn't getting any better. Mm. I broke down. I decided to have surgery at 29 mm. on my inner ear. Um, and it, unfortunately made me worse yeah. so I did a, it was a really intensive surgery the recovery was absolute trash um, yeah anyone who's had surgery on their inner ear probably knows that because it's yeah. a very sensitive neurologically and structural area yeah yeah and it, yeah. you hold a lot of stuff in your oh, yeah. head in the first place yes. so um, and at the time I was I was just I was desperate I was desperate to just be able to live my life again, be a partner again. I mean, I was not a wife, I was not a person yeah. for that entire year and a half, better on two years. Um, we, we had the surgery, I tried to find some normalcy, I thought maybe the recovery was taking a long time, so I tried to be kind in the time it was taking. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I was just getting worse. I was, I was still bedridden, I was still dizzy all the time, I slept all the time, I thought maybe I'm just depressed, that's why I'm sleeping all the time, but even on the very rare occasions where I, I, you know, felt okay when I woke up, yeah. I would feel, you know, like just tanked by the middle of the day. Like, oh, I'm so nauseous, so dizzy, I'm vomiting all day. Right. Um, I was at my wit's end. I, I had done what I believed I could do, what was being offered to me in, in regular medicine. Mm. Um, and finally, you know, my husband, who was already a little bit ahead of me in his own healing journey, um, had sort of already reached out to like the integrative medicine side mm -hmm. and was already taking supplements and exercising all the time. Um, he finally just said to me, what's the harm in going to a doctor who will take a different approach? Mm. Um, I was terrified. I had been raised to believe that all, all of that integrative medicine, chiropractic work, mm -hmm. uh, any of this stuff was like for crazy people. And for, you know, yes. Yeah. Like it was, it was one of those, if you do that, people are going to look at you like, Oh, that's the kind of person that she is. Yeah. And I had a lot of reservations, but I was desperate. I was beyond desperate. Yeah. Um, I needed, at that point, I started to become suicidal again. And it had been such some time before I had been that way, but it wasn't a life. I was not living a life. Yeah. I was suffering yeah. through a day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Um, so I went to my first integrative medicine appointment, and at that very appointment was referred to Dr. Mel. I remember that <laughs> phone call actually. Well, to speak to a few things, Ash, I mean, to think about all those things that you had been through mm. and going off a of medication on your own, which I will echo what you said for yeah. anyone who is curious on a different approach to mental health, very important to yeah. do your research, which yeah. you and Scott are really good at. And some people will just cut it cold turkey, which your body's going to re-regulate. It is, absolutely. But I think about, be hard. you know, some a lot of the people I've cured for here, and you um, especially, all of the adversity that you faced mm -hmm. for over a decade in your life, if yeah. you talk about adolescence, probably yeah. even before that, and yet still this, what you're speaking to, this inner, like, drive, yeah. and this inner will, even having the sui suicidal thoughts, and even having, like, what's the point of life, yeah. still that deep innate wisdom that's like, no, you are meant to be on this planet and there is another way. Just yeah. that persisting through those years is absolutely remarkable. Thank you. Um, and I know you've shared your story with me a lot, but I feel like there's nuances that come through that I'm like, oh my gosh, I did not realize, <laughs> I don't want to use good and bad, but I didn't realize it had gotten to that level of intensity. Yeah. I mean, I 
we'll get into this in a second about what's changed, but I forgot about the, the dizziness and the, yeah. and I like literally, cause you're such a different so person. Did I. I, so did I, honestly, like I had, when I was going to take notes before we came in, cause I was like, oh man, I was really sick. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to speak to that too, just before we continue is like, it isn't until you reflect back on your journey that you realize how far you've come in those moments that you doubt, like, have I made progress yeah. or is this even worth it? And you're like, Oh my gosh, I've come such a long way. So Absolutely. I just wanted to speak to that because I know people out there who listen to this um, have gone through similar things. And especially now, 2021, there's a lot of mental health stuff. Absolutely. And there are different paradigms, which I know you're going to speak to. So I get the call from Ashley and I remember this. Um, what was it? A I was year so and a half nervous. Ago? It was just about a year, right? It was July, right? So it was just a year ago. I, can't I think it's been a year. I know. I feel like it's been. It has to be way longer. Like a with the progress that I've made. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I'm like, oh, it yeah. surely is. But I think it's only been about a year. year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you called, went to integrative medicine, getting you know stuff balanced there. I remember you calling and sharing with me your experience. So then, what has transpired? So. I mean, after the very first adjustment. So I saw you, and I was still very much in this space. What is and I was this like, chiropractic? She's thing? not going to help me. <laughs> Look, all right? Like, nothing's going to come of this, but I'm going to go so I can say I checked all my boxes. Yeah. Um, so I was... I was a hundred percent skeptic. And I just yes. want to point that out that. because yes. people need to know that like, I didn't think any of this would work. No, I didn't believe that any, I, I just thought I was too sick. I was too unhealthy. I had already done all of these pretty hardcore modern medicine things and they didn't work. So what was this lady going to do for yeah. me? It was going to be nothing. Well, and just and to I, share you know, that like really quickly, a lot of people have said like, Oh, it works for these people. Right. But not for me. Exactly. It works for you, but not for exactly. me. And they also, that's why I wanted to really push this point. And I know we sort of reiterate it, but I really want people to understand, like, I did not come from a life of privilege. I did not, you know, have all my ducks in a row. And then I was like, oh, but now I just want to further my amazingness. No, none of that was going on. It's like, no, my life is like in the shit. Right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, but after my very first adjustment, I woke up the next day for the first time, I'll get teary, for the first time in two years, I was not nauseous no nausea and I, I hesitate to present it that way because it sounds like that's not possible what everything you're saying you went through um but it was i woke up completely not nauseous and even me still at the time i was like it's in my head it's in my head <laughs> like i'm totally not you know like i want it to be this way so it's working you know so i was very hesitant yeah. still um i had some serious like getting out of my own head to do in yeah. that regard um but really so right away it was no nausea and i don't want to give the impression that you know the, the couple months after that weren't really hard work mm -hmm. because they were yeah. really difficult work i mean i was going through becoming a different person what yes. do i value now what do i believe in now what do i understand now but i mean when you start getting the no nausea, I was suddenly showering by myself again. I was driving again. Yeah. Um, I work again. I have a job. <laughs> like I leave my house and go somewhere and help other people. Um, I, I've lost, since I started working with you, I've lost upwards of 79 pounds. Um, I've gotten off of birth control um, as a personal decision. Gosh, I mean, it's hard to like oh, I stopped smoking weed because I, I hadn't mm -hmm. done that yet on the thing. Um, well, you had were you still smoking cigarettes when you came here? Oh, yes. Like, I was vaping. Yeah. I should say, right. So I, I used to smoke. So God, there's so many things. Um, I you are a new human. When we vaped, I mean, I want to be very clear. Like, I smoked cigarettes from the time I was 16 until I was what? So I would have been 29, 30 yeah. when I first started coming here. I would have yep. been 30, right? Yep. So I was smoking cigarettes and then vaping. Yeah. Um, the problem with vaping and the difference to cigarettes is I was vaping the highest nicotine dose and really? constantly yeah. because you can do it inside. It right. doesn't smell. Why it smells not? pretty actually, right? So you're like, oh, fruity <laughs> flavors great. in my house, right? So you don't care. So I mean literally nonstop. Every activity that mm -hmm. I was doing, I was vaping. Um, mm -hmm. And I was way more addicted to vaping than I ever was to cigarettes. Um, Which I've heard that. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it was just... It's a different beast. Yeah. It's more nicotine and you can do it way more and you don't have to go outside or anything like that. Um, I 
two, two months, two months after I started getting adjustments, I quit vaping. Yep. I just teared myself down, got to zero milligrams. Was it easy? Hell no. It sucked. It sucked <laughs> so much, but I finally had like the power and yes. the space and the belief in myself yes. that I'd be able to do it. Yes. And before it was like, I was way too anxious. I, I didn't want to be uncomfortable. I was yeah. already uncomfortable You were all the disconnected. Time. Right. And so yeah. I finally just was like, nope. So yeah, we quit vaping. I can't, I thank you for remembering. It's a huge thing. That was a really big deal. Um, and I still, and honestly, I don't, like I know a lot of smokers, ex-smokers will say like they still really miss it or they crave it or they think about it even year plus later. Mm. Um, I just don't feel that way. Mm. I feel like the person that was vaping or smoking is just not running the show anymore. Yes. Um, it's like that person is no longer in the front seat. Yeah. So it just feels really, really different. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting, I, yes, I lost a bunch of weight, completely changed the way that I feed myself, look at my body. Um, I obviously am like a work in progress. I mean, I still have days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel tired and crappy. Yeah. But it's like a day here or there now, as opposed to every day of my life yeah. all the time. The predominant um, narrative. Right. Well, and I think too, Ash, what you're saying is, I want to be clear with this too, is a lot of the times, even in holistic medicine, mm. there can be a lot of suggestive things like, oh, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And that's fine. Like if you're not if you've never been exposed to maybe what meditation could do or yeah. what stopping vaping could do, but something that was really beautiful in your experience was there were these like light bulb awareness moments as your body mind got more integrated and connected and literally cells shedding layers yeah. of old parts of you and new parts of you coming through. You're like, you know what? Yeah, maybe I am open to doing this. Or like it was just kind of these different thoughts yeah. started to come through. Absolutely. And we entertain that versus like, okay, Ash, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this, because that's a big thing I teach is like, look, I'm not gonna give you all of these things to do, no. but let your body start to discover it and then have a conversation yeah. as your nervous system gets more aligned. And, and that's a really been a cool thing to see over the months. Thank you, that's a really good point is that she never was like, hey, you have to do this, you have to do this. I don't think, yeah, I don't think you've work. ever given me a demand <laughs> of any kind. Um, it was like, like once again, like holding the space right now, it, you held the space for me to realize that I could do these things. Yes. Things that I never, I never thought I would quit smoking weed, ever. I thought I would be smoking weed until the day that I died. I thought I'd be vaping until the day that I died. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I'd always be really overweight. I thought I would always be unhappy. Um, I, I did not anticipate how fundamentally life-changing that this work was for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and like I said, just a reminder, crazy skeptic. I did not <laughs> even put my toes in this kind of world a year ago. Um, and, and if I'm honest, and I should be, I looked down on people that did. Yep. Because I, I was superior. I held the, the high ground of, of my education and my yeah. research and, yeah. and everything else it would have been. And now, um, I mean, I could not be more grateful for the absolute, I mean, my trajectory before this care, I mean, I was definitely grasping at straws, trying mm -hmm. to get healthier. I was trying to get better. But if I'm totally honest with myself, number one, it was a really big possibility that I was going to end up dead. I, I, and I don't want to be dramatic in that. It's just truthful. I was so ill and so unwell that there just wasn't any light at the end of my tunnel for me. Um, but I feel so opposite of that now. I mean, my trajectory now is like, I'm going back to school, I'm getting additional trainings, I'm absolutely going to embody this work. I, I want to help everyone that I possibly can to know that if you can go from, you know, 12 year old being molested, abusing yourself, making every poor decision that you could from 12 to 28 to 30 years old, um, you you can come to the other side. There yeah. can be something else and there is another way and it's not, it doesn't have to be, I suppose I'll say, it doesn't have to be through someone else. It's through you. Yes. You showed me, me. Mm. And I am eternally grateful for that. <laughs> I'm gonna start crying. Um, I don't know, I don't know what else to say other than like just woman to woman, sister mm. to sister, like literally letting go of like the doctor hat, the practice member hat, like this to me is my soul calling mm. of like 
being a mirror and like holding that mirror up to you to yeah. recognize your greatness even through like the dark times yeah and again the more you share your story ash of just it you can feel the ripple into the universe and i hope this is landing for people but like it i don't, I don't know what else to say other yeah. than like i am honored i am humbled to just honestly be like alongside you yeah. like it's literally like hey I got you. <laughs> like, let me remind you of yourself and like come up here or down here or whatever direction we want to go. But then be like, look, it is in you. Yeah. And to be like, to hear everything you've gone through and still have that hope yeah. gives other people hope. Even you just sharing this now, however you're tuning in, is you are a healer, right? You, you are yeah. a healer. This is healing. I think people have this perception of like, you know, you going into these hospitals or like, I need to go somewhere to be healed. Right. And yes, Someone you will fix me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you come to inspire life, right? Like this is an external thing, but in reality, when you lay on the table, it's you tuning into you. Yeah, absolutely. It's you tuning into you. And that, that's the biggest thing. And I'm glad that you said that because that's the biggest thing I try to get people is like, yes, you leave your house and you come here. But in reality, like you come to yourself. Yeah. You're coming home. Yes. It's a place you go to come home. Yes. And I just, Real quick, one more thing I want to point out before yeah, sure. is what would, yeah, share whatever. Um, <laughs> if you're waiting, if you're waiting for anything, if anything is holding you back because you think you can't do it, you won't be better, I promise you I have been exactly there. You can do this. This work is not, it's not meant for a special kind of people. It's not meant for people who have a lot of money or have all their shit together or anything <laughs> like that. It's, it's meant for you. If you're waiting on anything, stop waiting. There's a person inside of you that needs your help and you can help them. I just wanted to really let people know I waited a really long time and I didn't have to. Yeah. And now I'm happy to know that I don't have to wait any longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so And invite people on. Yes, the journey, please, please. Like you, I, I you know I've gone through very similar things, and I think the more that we can get connected to our body minds together. That to me, and I know you have this vision too, and mission is like, it creates a healthier world. Yeah. Healthier relationships, kids, the work you're learning. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I mean, you, you've said it all. <laughs> I'm just holding the space for your amazingness. Um, don't wait. So if, if this is resonating with you, um, comment below. I know Ashley's on YouTube. Yes. Right? Yes, ma'am. So yeah. I'll, I don't know if I could tag you in this. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but comment below what questions you have because um, I know that, again, sometimes we bump on, on that edge if there's a new paradigm we're stepping into, you can have those yeah. thoughts that hold you back. And so I know I'm here to support you in that. Ashley's here yeah. to support you in that. Um, we have amazing practice members. Like, I just got to say that. Like, the people Seriously. here are freaking awesome. The community here is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So if anything, come and have tea with us <laughs> and hang out. It's just a healing space. That's right. um, anything else, Ash, you want to share? No. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for listening to your calling. Thank mm -hmm. you for giving the space. You're yeah, welcome. Truly. Thank you for allowing me to present my art and my work. <laughs> so thank you all for listening and tuning in. Um, if this resonates, share it with your people because um, we are on a mission to create a healthier world and create a more aligned world. So until next time, y'all, keep inspiring. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the Inspire Life podcast, everyone. I don't know about you, but after listening to that, I am inspired and just really grateful that I also have found myself in a space where I'm able to heal and help others do the same. So beyond that, please comment, like, and subscribe on whatever channel it is you're listening in on today. Also, jump on over to Facebook and join the Inspired Living community. There, Dr. Mel and I share all of our tips and strategies to help you continue to live your most inspired and thriving life. And of course, as always, until next time, keep inspiring. Thank you.